Well, I always seem to struggle a bit with the UK beach fishing sea. I mean, you can't get better, can you, than going out on the beach, fresh air, the pounding surf, but it would be occasionally nice to get the odd nibble from a fish. It's the way it is, but I still enjoy getting out there. Well, folks, this has turned into uh, maybe, maybe a bit of luck. The wife's got a friend, wanted to go down and meet her friend relatively close to the sea. She said, oh, it's near Chichester. I thought, oh, actually, yes, I'll drive you down there. So she's not driving. I thought I'd drive down there. I better check the beach first. Well, it's quite close to a good place at Selsey. When I find the friend's actual address, it is the Caravan Holiday Park at Selsey. Happy days. So not only have I dropped the wife off, happy there. I've been in, popped in the tackle shop in Haven, picked up a pound of squid, half a pound of worms. I've only got five hours because it's not a real full on fishing session like we normally have because the wife will want home and she wants a meal tonight on the way back. So I'm down here, I'm near some groins. I've never fished this section before. I've normally fished way up there, well, more than half a mile up there. So I don't know, plenty of weed about, plenty of wind. It's sort of coming in this way. So I'm tucked behind the breakwater. There were two guys fishing here. I walked down there and it says no fishing off the breakwater or climbing on it, or whatever. And that looks a really good spot down there. It is high water. I'm going to be fishing falling tide, perhaps not the greatest, I don't know here, but listen, you guys know it's like, you've got to keep the wife happy, everybody happy, if she's happy, I'm happy, I'm fishing, but there is a lot of weed in the water, bait, ragworm, squid, and that's it. I may or may not put the, uh, put the old storm shelter up, I've got to shelter off those groins, but I don't know, is it snaggy or what, you know, you can see the groins over there just pan across there you can see them the waves and the southwesterly which they gave going up to five for a short time and we all know that the short time is going to be the five hours I'm here uh, at the moment I guess it's just after high. it might be dead high I don't know I'm looking for and hoping for one smooth out I will of course take anything you can already see down there if you look down line full of weed just hanging there there's a lovely little bay here, and I'm wondering if the tide starts to ebb going this way, whether the weed will get pushed past this little groin, or will it circulate in there? At the moment, it appears the weed is being pushed in by the flood tide and the wind, so it's balled up in there at the moment, so who knows? Locals all know, probably say, you're wasting your time, Graham. I don't care if I am wasting my time, because I'm on the beach, I am fishing, and it's not the middle of winter, mind you. It does feel that way a bit. I may have to get that old, that old beach shelf up. The wind's a bit, a bit edgy today. I've got two pulley rigs on here, on that one, and that one, just chucked out as far as I can get it, and three small hooks on this one, sharpened up but fairly rusty, but they'll do on what's called the silly rig. So basically, although I've got a lot of stuff, it's just five hours of fishing, if you've got a chance, you've got to take it, and I'm taking it. Well, people, it's nearly sunglasses time. No bites. First cast out, slightly bit far right, I don't know. I thought after 30, 40 minutes, I'll wind in, check the bait. No, snagged up. You've got to laugh. First cast, broke off. Wow, what a start. The winds pushed the clouds away a bit, but it's really blowing. I mean, they gave up to a five, four to five, and that's what it is going to be out there. So white water way out to sea. So I've got the uh, beach buddy thing up just to get out the wind. And also, you know, when you're recording, you want a bit of wind. I might, I might have a cook up later on. I bought with me, wait for this, a sirloin steak. Well, my wife has some tomatoes. So I've got, I'm not going to die of starvation. I don't have to put the sunglasses on or not. You know, would that be pushing the limits, pushing the boundaries a bit too far. Tide is falling away now. Who knows, I'm just here, chilling on the beach, literally. Not a nibble, and the other rods when I brought them in, shredded totally, so I've got to change every 20 minutes. It must be an ocean of crabs out there, which I do wonder if the crabs are out there, why aren't the hounds out there? Or have they got too many crabs to feed on and they can't find my rag and squid combo baits? 
too many theories for me. Great monumental breakwater, rock breakwaters they put here. So you can see, if it wasn't for this, the southwesterly is going straight up over the top of the beach and taking about 5,000 caravans with it. See, it looks fishy, this corner. It's very fishy. I like it, but just look at the weed pushed up in the corner. And here. Yeah, strange. Fancy fishing off those rocks. There was a spot here, my plumber, Martin, was telling me they get cut off. So whether that's fishing here and tide comes in behind you or something, I don't know. Something down here of interest. I noticed loads of these. These are really the sort of backbone of the cuttlefish and they feed them to budgies and stuff. I don't know, it's a calcium what sharpens their beaks. But one of the guys did tell me, he said, if you get the chance, get some, and I'm going to take that chance and get some, because he makes, or he has made, hollowed them out and made lead weights out of them, flat to flat. So that might be something I could shape out there. So, presuming this sort of calcified material is uh, okay to put lead weights, make lead weights for them. Let's, let's take some home. No, wait, oh yeah, there. There's the other thing we're going to get millions of. Diseased mouth bandages. So you're looking at it from here. Those rocks out there, just out here. A nice break, we're making like a, a nice bay here. It could be a weed trap, it's certainly a snag trap because I lost a set of gear first cast. And it also throws up a lot of rubbish in the corners. Loads and loads and loads of these slip Olympic shells. And loads, yes, obviously plasticky stuff, of these cuttlefish. So I'm going to take a few, collect a few. I might actually go and try and make some at home. Job for the winter, maybe. Look, there's loads of them. Cuttlefish all washed up in here. And this is the time normally you get the cuttlefish coming in. There's another one. It's strange, you used to come beach fishing years ago. Even in the daylight, like, you'd be getting small flounders. South Coast years ago, it's really, really difficult in the daytime. You've got to sort of strike lucky. It's getting harder and harder in the UK. South Coast beach fishing, I'm talking anyway. At least I'm blanked on the cuttlefish. Well, folks, everything's coming back on the worm side, totally shredded, so crabs are out there. The one I whipped on a piece of squid there, just plain squid, that's okay. See, I've got a sequin there. And I'll just whip it at the top, put it on the taper, that's fine. What I did think I could do, I don't know if it's possible, there's no flat stones here. I wonder if this stuff cuts. Yeah, one side's hard and one side is soft. Ah, oh, I can see how, look, I can shaving this off. This is why that gentleman said he can make lead moulds out of it, I guess. Wow, that's weird. Looks like coconut. Even sounds like coconut when you cut it. But that, to me, is going to make me a nice little bait table. I wonder if other creatures eat that now it's been shaved. Yeah, I've got a nice flat surface. If it works, the knife probably actually goes right into. Let's try it. Look at that. There we go. These things I hate. This is the best thing to do with these. Go away and just give me some piece to fish. Hang on. Funny, but I might not be able to find it. Good, it's stopped, best place. Bury those phones, I hate the damn things. Every time I put into a car park, I just unload the fishing tackle. Off goes the old text thing. Whoop, 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 problem. Whoop, 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 problems. Right, so I've now got a bait table there, flat. I've learned something, I've never tried it before. You can shave the cuttlefish down like that and use it as a bait table. And that way you don't blunt the blade here because the knife will actually go into that. So, do I use some more worms? I guess 
Oh, great. I would if they hadn't fallen out the packet. Oh, sweetie. What a day I'm having. Oh, and they're biting me as well. Oh, happy days. What a session this is. I should have stayed in the caravan, safe with the wife and her friend, having a chat and a cup of tea. Oh, best thing. Yes, yes. Drop them all in there. Drop them in. That's unbelievable. Look. 16 pounds a pound and you drop them, Graham. Just came through the paper. Good Lord. Why do I go? I wonder why I go fresh water fishing. Well, don't get me wrong, it can happen there as well, can't it? Look at it, what a mess, what a mess. Anyway, that's the ragworm, guys, what's left of them. Got to get all the leads out. And the paper, and the elastic bags. Yeah. Listen, if it's going this peat tong at the moment, there's the phone again texting. Oh, I love it. If it's going this peat tong at the moment, what's going to happen when I try to cook my steak? Oh my god. Actually, there's even a little spot, a little recess I can put my bait thread in there. So I don't want to waste all these worms because you never know. I've got a falling tide. It's probably the worst ever you can get here. There's my worm going on, people. I'm going to put the worm on, I'll pop it over the hook. I'm going to tip it with a piece of squid. Just like this. And then, I'm keeping that hook point clear as you can see. Get my bait thread and just bind that around there. Either side of that hook point. I want to keep the hook point clear. Let's whip it up snap it off and there you can see I've got the sequin here so the worm doesn't blast right up with a stop and there's a nice small bait there although the only thing that's eating at the moment are crabs I'm wondering if it is the spider crabs that I know they come down here to collect are the spider crabs in this bay, this little corner area and that's what they're eating I wonder, I'm going to go for a smaller piece here guys a sliver as they say, no, it cuts really well on this cuttlefish so shave one side off, one side of the cuttlefish is hard the other side appears to be calcified and soft so I assume that is the inside I just put the piece of squid but I lay it along the inside not this doing me any good but trust me boat fishing I'll be using this it would do the job handsomely I'm sort of hoping now forget the smooth out for small bass a schooly bass I'm I'm looking at a blank saver see if I can not drop those in with my sandwiches this wind is up to about four to five it's right in my face it's killing my car stone dead Oh dear, it looks nice guys, trust me, for a fisherman it's not. There's a little sort of slack spot out there. All I could do is go down, risk a booty, and attack and retreat. Oh. That's my little shotgun rod, I chuck it out for anything that comes along, small fish or anything. Occasionally I'll get lucky with it. Quite a few people ask about it, oh is this just a tube? Waste pipe tube, sink tube taped on there. I've got a feeling there's nothing on these other lines. The wind if anything is getting even more. I haven't had a single bite. It has indeed blown the clouds away, that's one thing. You can tell just here, look, I'm getting battered. I've done a bit of beachcombing, you've got to be beachcombing careful now. You've got to be sort of, not street-wise, but beach-wise, because there could be masks and stuff and nasty bits along the beach now. But I do like beachcombing, so I've got my stash here of um, cuttlefish. I've got my shaved off, and look, this side is hard. See the way the, the flange goes down, that's hard. This is the soft side that you can cut. 
and that's the one I'm going to try and make some uh, lead moulds out of. Now, on the beach, what have we found? Anything interesting around the past of time? Is that, does anybody know, is that a British cone or has that been washed here from Africa or somewhere? Or the Mediterranean, maybe the Spanish coast? What do you think, guys? I feel that one, to be honest, might not be a British one. Of course, it could have just been washed in here, but being just south facing, I, I do wonder. What else have we got? I found an old oyster shell. We used to get these and throw them into the wind, and boom, they go up. So, kids, if you're watching, oyster shells are quite good because they're narrow for skimming or throwing. More toys. This one is what I believe are stripping my baits. This time of year, the spider crabs come in to shed their shells, and this is a spider crab shell. And the guys who come around these rocks, picking them out from under the rocks, are looking for crabs, uh, spider crabs that are peeling the shell, shucking off this hard casing. And when they do that, before this goes hard on the new one, it's soft, it's called a peeler, it's peeling this off. So that one there, if you could find that as a peeler spider, or spider peeler, that would be excellent. And they're all spiky and hard, the casings. So that would be a really good smooth hound bait, but not today. Finally, a piece of fantastic jewelry. If I move it in the sun, can you see it glistening and flashing? What is that? What's in it? Am I going to be a millionaire? If anybody wants it, actually, I'll probably take a tenner for it. So what's in there? Is that silica gel? Silica, silicate, whatever they call it, that's doing the flashing. Is this granite? Who knows what that sparkly stuff is in there? I'm hoping you get this while the sun's out trying to do it. I could put that on, I could super glue that to an old ring from the charity shop, give it to the wife. She would think that is a nugget from heaven. Finally, check those bites or not bites. Just getting stripped, that's what's happening. Anybody know it's not? No, they don't know what it is, do they? It's not a black stone. That is oil that's come out of an oil tanker. It might have been an illegal discharge. It might have been just a, you know, a leak or something like that. But it's oil floats on the surface as you've seen it, like a globule eventually solidifies like this. It goes very soft and pliable. And when it gets hot on the beach, it will, it will get very soft. And if you walk on it, you then walk it into your car. It sticks to the bottom of your shoe. It goes into your car onto your carpets, and the only thing I ever get rid of it with is something like petrol to dissolve it, uh, obviously, mostly for non-smokers. I am, however, curious as to whether I can stick a stick in here like this. No, I'm not making a lollipop, but I don't know when I cook my steak in a minute, because we're getting to that stage, is that going to burn as oil? Will it explode? I have no idea, but being a nine-year-old schoolboy, I feel you need to experiment with these things. I have another fresh bait up session and then uh, throw out. I mean it looks a beautiful day but there's absolutely, I can see nothing out there. Tides falling away as well. I wonder if I should bait up these two. I've got half a squid on the other one. I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger with the baits. Trying to keep the crabs off when that of course puts me out of the zone of the smooth downs and we're into the zone of a ray. God, dream on, Graham. Well, you just know I'm not going to die of starvation. The pan's on the go. Get in here. Join me for sirloin steak and tomatoes. I mean, it's going to be seared, hopefully. Probably, I would think, knowing me, not medium rare, not rare. There's a very good chance it'll be well done. And I'm going to put some, oh, it smells great. I'm going to put some tomatoes, sliced tomatoes in there as well. And have it in a Kiabata bun. I've just baited up all three lines, wound them all in, all stripped, bar, oh, big bit of squid out of one. Rebated, oh, it one, two, three, out, leave them. Give me time to cook this. If I get lucky, I'll get lucky. Well, I am lucky, really. Lucky to be out, aren't we? Let's face it. Out in the ocean. Not on the ocean, not yet. Tide's gone down. Got that thing up there, which uh, is the old current buns come out. You can tell by the back here, it's blasting me. 
about to take off, but it's, a, it's just a nice little bait of fish, but there's nothing in it at the moment. Hopefully I can get this straight so it cooks. The downside is beaches are seldom level. Get away from me, spitting fat. Just need to get one corner levelled a bit more. That's better. Gonna do the, the one side and then uh, as that gets done, as I flip it over, I'll drop the tomatoes in. I don't fear I'll be interrupted by anything up here. They remain ominously motionless. I tell you what, it's smelling really good. I might even throw a couple of these cuttlefish on in a minute. I think it's nearly ready for a turn. Yes. And then in we go. Tommy Tomato. Might be a tad hot there. Tune it down just a fraction. Making sure it is still lit, Graham. That's it. Put in the comments page, guys. How do you like your steaks? Rare, medium rare, well done, or just wipe it and saw the horns off. I just want to see it slam over with one fish. It's not a lot to ask, is it? Thing is, smooth hounds. The thing is, smooth hounds don't like really rough weather, I don't think. So I'm told anyway. And it's pretty windy out there. A nice, still, warm flood tide in the evening, just as dusk is going. And down here they get some really good fish. But, I mean, over there is just a mass of white water going into Bracklesham Bay. Up the rocks there. Just look at the wind. It's just non-stop. Gonna be a big sandwich, boys, I can tell you that. I might have to have a tomato sandwich and slice this beef up. Eat it like a caveman. I've cut it in two. That is definitely off. That can be moved out of the way. That's better. Yeah, that's good. All good. In we go to the said Kia batter. Ongo tomatoes cooked to perfection. I could have done with some pepper sauce or something, that would have been good, wouldn't it? And there we go. I think you'll agree that is a meal fit for a man about to have a blank. Hmm. Get in there. Ragworm on the fingers, squid on the fingers, cooking oil and meat. Yeah. Forgot the beer though. Mm, that's good. No bites, not for the moment. That is really good. One thing I do feel needs trying is the inflammable qualities or the combustibility or the explosive qualities of uh, my oil lollipop. Is that going to burn? Oh, I can smell it. Or is it going to melt? Oh, you can see it dripping and melted. Let's give it a little bit more juice. Well, actually, it doesn't flame up, but you can see how it goes st sticky and tacky and yucky. And that's what it does in the heat in the summer. It sticks to people's shoes. Man's pollution, I'm afraid. So we're taking that home with the rubbish. Otherwise, it's going to go on somebody's shoe.
So I've moved from up on there. You can see how much the tides dropped down here. Heck of a lot. It's about uh, three hours down now. So pretty well a blank on the cards, but you never know. So rather than be up there in the wind, I'll leave the uh, survival shelter up there and I've moved my tripod down here. And obviously I can cast a little bit better down here than be way up there in the wind because I'm way below where these folders are. Boulders? Well, that's what you call a sea defence. Now I'll walk up against it, you can actually see uh, how high this is and how big these boulders are. Chunks of rock. Big defence there. And it's in amongst here that they get those spider crabs, they go looking for the uh, spider peelers. I reckon probably about another week or so, not much, probably the next big tides, big spring tides, this will be full of anglers trying to catch smooth hounds, but it's got to be a nice sort of big tide, evening flood tide, muggy, that sort of thing, still not this awful wind. I'm up against it, but listen boys, that's the way it is. At least I'm out by the water on the beach. Almost wish I was back down in Somerset. Always a chance down there. Hard to think that that speck up on the beach could keep you alive all night. Well, I suppose if you had steak as well, that does help. Come on, one bite, just a bite, even if I miss it. Oh, I'm trying to keep out the, uh, out the wind a bit, and I can see my rods just down there. Bigger waves coming now, I guess, because the water's shallower. You can see down there, sort of, two, you won't see it from up here because there's a wide angle lens, but there's sort of two or three footers coming around that headland there. The rocky outcrop. One thing you will get when it's like this is when there's a bit of surf running like this, in rough weather, you do tend to stand the chance of getting a rogue bass. Now, what I never understand, it's all being stirred up, the food. It's all being churned up, isn't it? So I can understand the fish will be there, but I don't understand why would the bass feed and then say, let's say the smooth hound doesn't. Why do, why do they, you know, that's the saying that rough water is the time to catch bass. Well, we're not catching bass. And why do the smooth hound not like it? Because my baits are getting stripped as fast as I can get them out there. So the pain, the obvious is crabs out there, but no smooth hounds. Oh dear. And another point here, which is telling me it's not good. I've always found when you find the seagulls just sitting around up on the foreshore, on the beach, wherever, if they're sitting, they're not working, they must know something. You just, odd one flying around, he goes over there, sits down on the beach. If anything, the wind's got worse, just gonna sit here tucked out, give it an hour, and I think I'll call it quits. Even a rogue school bass of six ounces would do it. Well, well boys, I'm shooting the camera, I'm going over the edge here. And right down, this is the reason I'm calling it quits. That's why I lost my gear, got dragged in the point there. Just when I thought I had a giant thornback ray on, <laughs> I find this woman with a strange haircut. This means pack up, because that slid all down the line and could easily have dragged all my gear into the rock, so it's running that way now. So I'm out of it, no fish, yeah, another beach blank, but you know what, it's still better than staying mowing the lawn at home. Guys, we'll see you in the next one. I'm sure I'm going to find some more jobs to do. One of which is stripping this woman's hair off. Look at it. It's a mermaid. So, back in the Totally Awesome Workshop, having had the blank, I've got some squid left over, and I've been saving these 
just plastic sort of takeaway things. I don't actually know what comes in them. Commercial ones. Egg mayo came in that one. Keep some of these. And I'm going to put the squid in there. Um, out of here. This is where I don't waste anything at all. And I've got a few ragworm left. And what we're going to do... I've never kept these well, but I did go boat fishing once with some frozen ones and caught wrasse on them. So what I'm going to do is sort these and wrap them individually and then freeze them in one of these tubs. So let's have a think about this first, Graham. I've tried all this before when I was younger, obviously. I'm going to shake out any of the vermiculite or peat that they have. these up because I think with the actual sort of juice in them if I keep them separated from each other I think they will survive better <laughs> when I say survive better I'm talking about the quality of the meat they're going into the freezer so they're not going to survive at all this is the way I'm going to do it so you could do this with Lugworm as well, especially black lug. I'll check those are loose. We're just going to get some table salt here. In fact, I might as well do them like that, won't I? They're not going to like this table salt, that's for certain. Give them a good douche in a table salt. The wife will never know how much I've used like this. I think it'll toughen them up. So they've got a good bit of table, table salt there. I'm not going to roll them, broken or otherwise, individually, if I can, like this. Hopefully you can see this. One. Two. I'm hoping this is going to sort of toughen them up a little bit. And then when I can... I don't think it'd be any good for beach fishing. They might do good for rock fishing. Or indeed... Rass fishing off a boat, that is what I'm thinking of, to be honest. And black bream. Sooner or later, I'm going to get out there and catch some fish. There's enough in that wrap. So that wrap can then go in here. Like this, just pinch them shut so they come out. Next one, more salt. It's just like making pastry, isn't it, really, sort of food preparation. I'm going to give this a double wrap, you'll notice there. I could still end up with mush, guys. I could still end up with a load of mush. And I'm not going to put the squid in with them, these. Because I think the juice of the squid, even before they freeze, I think the juice from the squid will make them go a little bit mushy. Now I've had a sort of day's fishing out of this, fine. I know I've caught nothing, but I don't like to waste any bait at all, especially with the figures they charge nowadays. Good Lord. There'll probably be enough to catch some black bream here. There we go, I think I'm pretty well done there. It's just a way of giving it a try. You know what it's cost me? Nothing, because they will die anyway. They're like, that one's dead. It's a green one. So anything like that goes in there. In the packet. Lid on. I can't mistake that for anything else. That is going into the bait freezer there. So I've got some there. And then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to make some lead moulds out of this. Don't forget, guys. This is a bit of a mess. I've got the box of squid there. It's not going to fit into one of these. This is a salted squid I've been sent, a salted one. I've not caught anything on it at all. I don't think that's fitting in there. No, it won't fit, but these are still chilled, so they're going to go straight in there like that. I can then dump the box, as you can see. 
that's left over fresh stuff still a little hint of chill in there so hopefully I've saved them hopefully the next time out I catch something preserve the bait first guys job we want to do is you can see the sun is going down and G-man is still working do the drags up on your reels tight wash this down now before you put it away I don't even untie mine I just do a light spraying like this all the way over the whole lot rinse that salt off it's not going to do anything any good at all and with the real um, drag screwed up then there shouldn't get too much water in the washers and just make sure you turn them over give them a good douche in I find it's best not to jet it in like this because any salt particles or sand you would actually drive into rather than dissolve out of the unit all little tips just move the bail arm a bit just in case there's anything in there job done put them in the garage to dry, up, dry out you could actually do it with leads if you wanted any hooks but I'm not doing that tonight that's me done although the day was a failure I can't wait for the next trip well guys this is something different yeah check out what do you have? think this race sweater or a jumper I'm here with my daughter Charlotte we're at Ham House in Richmond and guess what we're not fishing what are we going to be doing filming for the antiques road show not me it's going to be an antique music box will I appear on the television will I be famous will the music box even work I don't know more of this and we're going to have a quick look at this fantastic place here are my new front gates And here is my view. So it's Ham House in Richmond, filming with the Antiques Roadshow. We've already done a little film shoot. We're gonna have a walk now. We've done a little bit of film in there. Have a walk around and we've already seen Charlotte. Charlotte spotted this lady. Fifi. And who was this? Fiona Bruce. We actually saw Fiona Bruce, exactly. Um, I did mention to her that I'd just been watching her on Panorama. And I had indeed the night before. Here we go, walking down. Oh dear, there's a, there's a gentleman on the left there standing. I think he's just thrown a ball of ground bait. This gentleman is, well, what can I say? And there you go, Antiques Roadshow filming. Fantastic house. So we've just been watching a film in there, come out to look at some of the gardens because after we finish the film and apparently we can uh, have a walk around. So just check this out, it's all lavenders, all lavender bush. Beautiful patterns of hedge trimming. You can tell that's not done by the totally awesome gardening crew because it's all neat and tidy. Cone shaped hedges, box hedging into a cone shape and lovely and there it is for the gardeners lavender lavandula angus dophia oh dear don't even go there gran it's lavender trust me my grandmother used to say as a, as a youngster if i wasn't sleeping when i was going on a sleepover put some of this put lavender under your pillow and you will have a good night's sleep after covid i don't think there's enough lavender here for me So this looks like a beach hedge. I don't expect the light's going to be too good in here for my old GoPro. An avenue. Wow, oh, look how they're intertwined. I wonder how old these are. Would this have been a beach hedge? And these horizontal bars are trained crossways and vertically it's tied in. A lot of gardening work's gone into that. And check the view out of the house. Walking away from the Beech Tree Avenue. Not Birch, Beech, Beech, Beech. Think Beech, Graham. Oh no, that's sand. Here we go, we come out. You can see the camera cruise boxes, the AR, the old antique roadshow shows. There is a huge house there. There's actually, on the back here, is 
is that Richmond Park and way way in the distance it looks like another sort of Hampton Court Palace I'm going to call that pretty impressive eh and a lot of filming going on Well, that was a lovely fun day out. But I'll tell you what, it's a bit nerve-wracking being in front of proper TV cameras with all those people around you. Good fun, though. Now let's get back to base camp and reality where we're trying to finish off for the granddaughter a miniature thatched roundhouse. Well, it's pretty well done. I've got to let uh, Mike, he's got to finish a bit on the inside for me. But did I get through some clay or what? It was so bad. I've had to dig half my garden up. Come and check this out. So maybe you can see what we've got here is a big bank of clay that runs along the outside of the property that was built up from the excavation I had, putting the pilings in 27 feet down for a house extension we had done. We packed it all here. Mike drove the dumper truck dumping it here. Put carpet all over it, as you can see. Put gravel on it, so I knew there was clay here on my property. And when I was bringing it up, it's pretty tough digging, I can tell you. But what a creature I found in there. You've got to see this thing. It's like something out of Alien. We already noticed that this year, coming down mostly from the oak trees, we noticed big long threads like this, on the end of which is a green caterpillar. They are everywhere. The wife loves them because they go into her hair. And you could be sitting watching TV, they start crawling all everywhere. You think that's bad, I'll show you one in a second but the other one is something else. You have to marvel at, look, this little chappy, this little miniature caterpillar, who's actually threading his way either up or down, I'm not sure, you know, using, well, like a twisting sort of technique as he goes up and down. And there's loads of those. Most of them seem to hang out from the willow tree, and that's what they hang down from, the willows and the oaks. And I'm not quite sure what they do. They're quite pretty close up, but I don't know whether those fibres are they poisonous, somebody tell me? And also, I'd like to know the name of them. There are millions around about May. Now, this thing I've captured, if he's still in there, looks like he's buried himself. No, he's in there. He's buried himself in there. Let's get him out and check him out. This thing is beyond belief. It doesn't look big, but look at the size of my finger compared with that green one. It is like something that Sigourney Weaver should be fighting in the Alien. One of those things that comes out of the egg. Does anybody know what this thing is? It's got like one, two, three legs. Oh, it's got pinches it looks like at the front there. I'm just going to try and get those out. Try and get those pinches out. Definitely got some nasty fangs on the front of it. That is a nasty looking critter. One, two, three legs. I don't know what this bit of the back is, but is it? As you can see there, he's, he's gonna try and pinch out. What a good job I didn't pick him up with my fingers. Now he's actually got hold of it with his pincher there. Is that not one disgusting creature? Yucky. Anybody know what it is? I'm thinking it is the larva from a sort of stag beetle. It's a big critter. He's actually locked on now, look. He can hold his own body weight, so you can imagine he can get all pretty much anything he wants. Who knows what it is, people? Does it have a sting in the tail and the pinchers? Is it one of those black devil's coachmen that we used to hate as kids? It's a nasty looking critter. I've mixed up all the Watland door, which unfortunately in the sun has gone hard, so Mike's going to have to uh, soften that up. A 
can you imagine sleeping in here overnight and waking up and there's one of those crawling across your face? Yuck! It gets worse. I'm trying to turn this into a creature feature. Across there, by the pond, I find what looks like a massive dragonfly that's attacking and killing another beetle. Check this one out. And there on the wall was this ginormous dragonfly with the most exquisite pattern on his wings there. Beautiful green body, but he's clamped onto something he's caught there. I don't know. He seems to have got it by the neck in his calipers, but I was more fascinated by the fibres in the wing. Little crisscross patterns, beautiful really. But he has got, what is that, some other form of beetle. You can see he's got it, you know, locked on. He's paralysed it or done something with it. I, I flicked it away and he's still there. Look, he's still live. And then what I do is, obviously, as boys do, you have to get the bait that he was either eating, killing or whatever he was doing with it. Just, just there, and then I'm going to put it back on. I, I don't know, what is that sort of beetle? Does anybody know what that one's called? I put it there, and you can see him trying to get it with his paws. Well, it's not his paws, it's his legs, Graham. And then he locks on and decides, you know, is he poisoning it, chewing it, what's he doing? So what's the second one there? Who can tell us the secret of the fly? Well, I hope that passed a bit of time for you guys out there. Just a mishmash of diff well, it's all different bits and pieces, isn't that? It's something different. It's the size of those insects. I mean, is that global warming or is it natural? We'll see you in the next one. Hopefully, I get some good fish this time. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button. TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. If you feel that way inclined, hit the like button. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.